it in there. Uh, concrete 10. Uh, used up the last of my stockpile of concrete. Uh, so it'll be a little bit before I do this last little stretch. Uh, yeah, you know, I started doing uh, four bags per load just to make the car lighter so it's easier to get up the thing. And like lumber and stuff. So I got all the lumber and it'll be metal siding and metal roof and corrugated. Uh, corrugated. Uh, not this five rib. I don't got any, not that. Uh, I got it up there and in there. Uh, yeah, it'll be a little bit while I'm picking up this, you know, picking up the last concrete. Uh, so I'll be doing uh, the framings for over there, building the actual outhouse. Uh, I got the forms going. This is a piece of plywood, 5 A's. Kind of butted into the three quarter, some 3 A's. Stitched together, a scrap piece, but not wide enough. Uh, it's miscellaneous framings. Oh, whoops! I gotta give it another bolt. Uh, Bolts I'm using. Uh, so I had forgotten to pick up bolts when I started doing that top course over there, and I had enough toggle bolts to do that. That's why I use toggle bolts over there. But I don't have enough toggle bolts. Those are those toggle bolts were left over from a prior job. I didn't have enough of those to do this. I had maybe like four left or something of those. So pick up bolts. This is a while ago. This is kind of scary. Ah, uh, this is starting to get pretty short, you know. Oh wait, no, that's a long thing. What is this? Sticks down. Sticks down. Four or five inches, not too bad. Yeah, this scrap piece is just really long. That's why it sticks down so far. Can you give it a little jiggle to reliquify it? Okay, it's sticking them up too much. Uh, yeah, it is getting a little close with this. I might have to lower this at that end to get my bolts all the way in there. Cause you're digging in three inches. Uh, well, with some long ones, three inches in. So when I do do the top course concrete, I got something to tie a rebar to, you know, just pull out the wood and do the things. Uh, this started off a quarter inch, but you know, as it they're doing some wet pours, so I don't have to stick anything in there, and it gets nice and airtight, no bubbles. Uh, it is weaker because it's got more water, but strong enough. Uh, boat out, so I gave it those. It's doing like the guest house years ago. I was doing like official forms, you know, doing like the top plate, bottom plate, and studs, you know. Uh, I was doing, I think, a four foot pour maybe at the deep end of that. And it was still bowing, you know, you're doing half inch OSB for the sheathing. You know, it was the sheathing I was using. I wasn't using three quarter, it was still bowing. So it's kind of like doing minimal farms, you know, but bowing is like an issue, but it's not too bad. It gives you things to brace stuff, you know, having these little seams, you can shove stuff in there and use for bracing, you know. 
nah, really what the whole purpose is, is just to hold back the dirt and you kind of see this is highly clay, this is like clay and gravel, which is like basically con a different kind of concrete, you know. It's like brick material right here. Sand, clay, and, gr and gravel, like make some pretty good bricks probably. It's not gonna push in. Oh, and once, you know, doing these every two foot, I get a good tie in, you know, so the roof will, this slab keeps the bottom apart. And then the the framing up here, this will be every two foot, doing a, you know, like a rafter. Uh, you know, that'll keep the uh, tops from caving in, you know. So that's kind of what's pinning it, you know, the slab at the bottom and then the roof at the top. Uh, anyways, that's it for this one. Uh, doing different plywoods. Got a bunch of little things kind of just shoved in there, wedged. A single concrete stake, two things. Uh, a little outside the lines. Not too bad. Nah, that's just sitting on. Sitting on that, you know, it's kind of hard to... I don't want to be getting concrete on this. Uh, Getting there though, looking good. Oh, and no forest fire. What do you know? Look at that. Easy peasy. Appreciate you listening uh, to Disciples' view on Todd Herman. We were just talking in the last segment about uh, the fact that the people who run Joe Biden are not going to stop flooding the country with illegal immigrants because they're flooding the country with their attitudes, their expectations of government, and the mere weight, the, the sheer weight on our system. It's a program called Cloud Pippins decided to break us, and we are unbreakable with God. So we talked about using this as God saying, hey, I'm providing you with a whole bunch of new fruit right for the picking into my church. Are you going to use this or are you going to hang your heads and stomp your feet? I'm stomping my feet. I'm really angry to watch this cultural revolution work so well against us as we're taken. And I'm really excited if God really is using this. Why wouldn't he? First, against our churches because I'm here to tell you that the uh, Islamists are doing this. And I can love people of the Muslim faith, and I can say, I think your faith is satanic. And I can love you. And I'll look, I'll have to debate with you. I have it in a polite way, I would think. Because you guys kind of think we're Satan sometimes. Maybe we can figure it out together. I get a bet on our side. This guy named Gabriel Nornha. He's a former State Department advisor to Iran. And he has made us aware of a place called the Islamic Education Center. It's a huge intelligence. And he describes it as hiding under the guise of a religious institution. He says, to be clear, this is his words, it's not about Islam, it's about advancing Iranian propaganda. That's why they host an annual com uh, commemoration of Rullah Khomeini, the founder of the Iranian regime. And he provides proof. Or as kids say, and it annoys me, it's an annoying saying to me, he provides the receipts. The July 2022 video shows hundreds of children singing an ode to Qasem Soleimani, an Iran's supreme leader with lyrics, I will be your soldier, a martyr. It's not Tehran, it's Houston. I will be
a suicidal country, a spiritually lost country, a captured country. Uh, so we need to begin to treat churches as mission fields. Tomorrow, you're going to hear a great, great pieces of excerpts from an interview I did with a young man who calls himself Redeemed Zoomer. He has a plan, and it's working, to retake churches that have been captured by heretics, Christian churches. It's a beautiful plan. Uh, our churches are mission fields, many of them. So is the Islamic community. Hey, if God can use this time, and he is, to create a record number of converts to the Lord Jesus out of the Middle East, we could do that here, but we first have to go into the neighborhoods to meet people and to talk with people. So back to this topic of this place in, uh, in Houston, this so-called educational center. These days, he writes, he's been, and at least since 2013, their websites has noted that there are parallel celebrations in Detroit and Dearborn and Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, and Los Angeles. At these celebrations, you have Khomeini quote readings like this one. He may he sever the hands of those who wish to create dissension among the Muslim countries. Number three, all must know that the superpower's aim in creating Israel does not end the occupation of Palestine. They plan, heaven forbid, to extend the faith of Palestine to all Arab countries. Number four, do not support Israel. This enemy of Islam and Arabs for this listless viper will have no mercy on you, young or old, if it gets within your reach. What kind of country does not screen people who come in ideologically? Well, that's against the First Amendment. No, it's not. It's not about speech. They can say whatever they like. It's about, are you on the team? Can you be a functioning team member, a contributing team member? Not if you hate this country. You can't be. You can only serve one master. This is from a presentation to Eagle Scouts. Yes, yes, this Islamic center in Houston is allowed to run Eagle and Boy Scout programs. Texas. So certainly uh, Islamists see America as a mission field. Do we see Houston as one? But it's a red city, is it? All the world's a mission field. On this program, we love to recognize the fact that God, even the God of sometimes war, the God who sees all is also the God who invented laughter and the sense of humor. And we thank the Lord for placing supposedly wise on tall towers of shaking sand the Tower of Babylon. Do you know about the biblical truth of the Tower of Babylon? A Disciple's View presents... And there's a lot of other... For example, the idea that we're, uh, in terms of uh, taxes, that they refuse to... For example, we... Uh, I was able to balance the budget and pass everything from the... The Tower of Babylon. Oh, just thanks to the AFR team for putting together a variety of those. Uh, at least we have that. It's easy to figure at Biden. Speaking of him, 60 Minutes Scott Pelley said figurehead Biden had to wedge this interview into his busy schedule. Really? Biden had two events that day. A 10 a.m. briefing and a 4.30 meeting. Rarely does a president confront so much peril. The catastrophe in Israel, the war in Ukraine, and no help from a paralyzed Congress. Late Thursday, we met President Biden at the White House. It had been a rough week, and we could see it on him. Mr. Biden will be 81 next month, and he has said that when he's tired, his lifelong stutter can creep back in. But he wedged us into his schedule to express his commitment to Israel after the massacre of more than a thousand civilians eight days ago. I'm not laughing at the, the, the slaughter of civilians, obviously. 
That man's, quote, stutter was invented about two years ago to explain away his dementia. And Pelly speaks as if these things have just happened to him. It since he was installed. Because our enemies know a weak and demented and mentally decrepit, corrupt figurehead when they see one. That's true. So some of Biden's young British comrades have taken up his political style, making themselves obviously unlikable. Stop oil protesters bragged about stopping the awards for a celebration for a huge video gaming contest. So what's going on? We are just stop oil, and we are demanding that the UK government immediately cease all the licensing of coal, oil, and gas. They went to a video gaming conference to convince people to take their side by stopping the awards ceremony. Uh, oh, by the way, all of them there, all of them there, had these devices with them called digital cameras and phones, and all of those, all of them are made with them, all of them. Not to be outdone in babbling, students at Clemson held a protest this week over the fact that tampons were removed from the men's bathrooms. Sanitary product dispensers to be removed from a men's bathroom on campus. Men are men, women are women, men cannot menstruate. So of course we spoke out against that. Of course these people think the opposite and that's why they're out here protesting us. The dispensers were reportedly vandalized and removed from the bathroom within days. Very quickly those were ripped out. We want to and we would love cross campus. Some LGBTQ students are now asking the university to take action against the Clemson College Republicans. We demand formal repercussions towards the Clemson College Republicans. We have simply stood up for biological reality, and they reject what we believe, and so they want us to get removed from campus. They're also requesting that the university's non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy be changed. I don't stand with the vandalism, obviously. I do stand with truth, and that's a wrap for today's Tower of Babbling. That was the Tower of Babbling. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. How's it put him in the... <laughs> <laughs> On a disciple's view. Uh, thank you, AFR team. You know, the Bible tells us so much about peace. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. We've talked about inviting the illegal immigrants into our churches, even as we fight to make sure that one day we can have a secure border. Peacemaking. 1 Peter 3, 10 through 11. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Houston is a mission field. We need to enter it. All life is a mission field. Yep, there are wars going on and rumors of more. And there's a spiritual war. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 through 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high position, that, may, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. I can tell you, since God slapped me one day, and made me spend 45 minutes on this program talking about and tr feeling, truly, truly feeling empathy for the lost soul stored in this flesh called Joe Biden, I can legitimately pray for that man. Can you? It's not saying that to accuse. It's a legitimate question. Can you do as God has asked us to do to pray for that figurehead? Because right now, he is kind of in charge. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 34, 14. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And then there's this one. We had a long rumination about this during our life group because a phrase in John 14, 27 really, really stuck with me. The Lord Jesus speaking. 
peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Lord Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Then he said, my peace I give to you. What was the source of the Lord Jesus' peace? What is his peace? Well, he was and is God. He was at that point fully human and fully God. His peace is he knows how it ends. His peace is he fears no one who can harm the flesh. Only that who they who could harm the soul. Then he says, not as the world gives do I give to you. The world has nothing to give. Only to loan. We can't give a thing. We can loan it. On earth. We give. Whatever we give eventually expires. We can only loan. The Lord Jesus said, Not as the world gives do I give to you. He gives us his peace. His very peace. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Let them not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Lord Jesus is telling us, I have given you my personal peace that does not expire. Thieves and moths cannot. It does not. It's not something that can be taken from you. So let not your hearts be troubled. Let us go into the world as what it is, a mission field that's about to get more and more right, even as it gets more and more scary. And let us not be afraid. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Because we believe we speak, He loved us, we speak His Word. We walk in the path of Jesus to make disciples of all nations. Until you and I speak again tomorrow, God willing. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest upon you and your family. This is the disciples view. I'm Todd Herman. God be with you. Opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.9 WPRH Paris. Headlines in USA today, just said this morning. All the odds are against us. Thankfulness is the word. There's a place for you on the battle line. Engage in the fight for America's families. Visit ASA.net and then take your position. A message from the American Family Association. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. American Family News, I'm Musty Peter. Five shipments of American-made weapons have arrived in Israel with more on the way. The U.S. is giving Israel free reign on how to deploy these weapons. Rich Edson has more. The Pentagon says American weapons are arriving in Israel on a near-daily basis now, and that Pentagon is working as quickly as it can to fulfill Israeli requests. The Defense Department is defending these military aid packages and giving Israel the ability to use American weapons with a wide latitude. The Defense Department says the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit and its 2,000 Marines and sailors is moving closer to Israel through the Red Sea. The Pentagon says the unit is equipped to execute amphibious missions, respond to crises, engage in limited contingency operations, though officials say this unit does not yet have orders. The president or defense secretary can change that. 